Welcome back y'all to another video. This one's going to be a challenge. So I'm going to take this here knife with this here blade and do some leather working. Now this knife is designed to do leather working amongst other things. I'm about to show you here in a minute one of the things they used it for back in the day. This challenge came about was I went to my local knife shop. There was a fellow in there had some slips and wallets and things he made laid out on the counter. And he was talking to the owner about them. And I, I leaned over, was checking them out, you know. And he turned to me and said, I'm a professional leather worker. I'm thinking, cool, you know. I do leather working too. It's always nice to see somebody enjoy and do the things you do. So I take out my phone and I'm flipping through some stuff, showing him pictures, showing him, you know, tools and things I've used. And he turned to me and says, you'd be nothing without them fancy tools. And I'm thinking, it don't matter if they're fancy or not. You know, you enjoy using what you got and you enjoy the things you make with it. You know, I, I don't understand it. So on the way home, it just kept nagging at me, thinking about what this fella said. I'm thinking, man, I got to do something about it. You know, so I'm going to make a slip using this knife for this knife and some other primitive tools I gathered up. So if you want to watch me try this, stick around. Let's get on with it, y'all. Okay, so I have gathered these primitive tools for this challenge. This is a sewing awl made from the tooth of a saber-toothed tiger. A multi-purpose tool made from the toenail of a T-Rex. And the thread is sinew, which is made from the intestines of animals which is also gross. And we have here is a device once used to build the pyramids. But most of all, this has puzzled archeologists for years. This is a tool made in the North Americas by primitive man. Archeologists once said that primitive man did not make their own tools in the North Americas that they outsourced it to other countries. So that makes this very rare and unusual. So let me get you a history lesson on the pocket slip for a knife. One day after my uncle discovered fire, all my relatives were sitting around and my uncle said, it would be nice if I had some kind of something to put my woolly mammoth knife in. And my cousin responded, I have lots of animal skins. I can fold them over, sew it together. You can insert your knife and put it in your pocket. Behold, the slip was born. Dun, 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 dun. Now this slip is made from a more modern woolly mammoth called the elephant. It is lined with veg tan leather. So if you're ready to get started, I am. But first I gotta get me a drink of vintage dinosaur pee. People don't realize that the water on this planet is the same water that has been around for billions of years. There's no new water being made. This was once drank by dinosaurs then peed out and filtered, and now we're drinking it. So I have here is a piece of animal skin, which I am going to attempt to make a slip. So now let's get started. Okay, so I put a little water along the inside and outside here, so I can fold it over a lot easier. Now I'm going to measure off about two inches is the average pocket slip size. So this is a little bigger than two inches. So roughly about there. Now this is going to be the top, the opening to insert the knife. So 
So the bottom here is where I'm going to sew it closed. So I'll probably just cut a line straight across here. There. Now we have the bottom straight across. I'm going to leave this line natural and just stitch along this line from here down and insert a rivet right about there. Oh, I, I might not use the rivet. Let's see. It may bring it too small. Nope, I think it'll be okay. I hope. So if we put one right there. And just stitch along this line and this line. Now I'm going to use contact cement which back in the day they would have probably used a um, animal hide glue which is made from animal hide but I need to go get something to open this up so we can glue this together sometimes these lids get glued shut I try to put tape around it to prevent that from happening, but it doesn't always work. Some people have put other stuff along the threads here, um, Vaseline, all kinds of stuff. I just try to cover it with some tape. I use these silicone spatulas. Makes it easier to clean off the the glue that was once on it and reuse it. leather is still wet right there so it might not stick as well
All right, now let's uh, let's wait for this to dry. Meanwhile, I want to show you what the knife was once used for. Imagine if you had a loop, a metal ring, and this was attached around it. It was a longer strap. Occasionally, these would break. You know, in horse tack, um, for buggies, horse, anything, but you would have this. You could take your knife. If it broke here, you could fold it over, make new holes. This one's made of three holes. You can fold over your new piece, put your knife through it, make a new hole, another one, and the third one. Then you can take your lace and lace it back through, and your tack for your harness would be fixed. It's one of the things they use for this knife. Let's give it a few more minutes. And we'll come back and glue it. All right, and this is somewhat tacky. Normally you'd wait for all the water to dry before applying glue, but I'm gonna go ahead with it. there we have it so I'm going to attempt to trim off the excess all the way around it There, you have it. So the next step would be to mark out your stitch lines. And determine where this will go. I think I'll separate them about an eighth of an inch. Let me check that, make sure it looks good.
I think I should be all right for this size thread. So now I'm ready to mark the line that I have to put my stitches on. I'm going about an eighth of an inch. Ribbit right about there. So my stitches will go here. Just kind of freehand this one. So now I need to go back and mark the stitch holes I'm going to make.
So the next thing to do is take this. Like I said, this is originally intended as to create holes, like I showed you here. It's not so much as sewing all, but it could be used as one. Um, I'm going to use it to mark my stitches to use my sewing all, but first I need to get something. So I'm going to mark it at a, almost a 45 degree angle. as easy as it looks. So now that we have <clears throat> all the holes marked, get our sinew out. Now typically you go for the length four times. It's not, not dealing with a real short thread. Now, I've never sewn with this stuff before, so I have no idea what it's going to be like. I normally use something called Tiger Thread, which is this stuff right here, or Rit Ritza Thread, Tiger Thread. It's the same product. And I usually use a lot smaller needle than this, so let's see how it works out. Get the first one started. Then from here, I'll take it over to my stitching pony, which is not primitive, but 
it's what I'm going to use. So let's get on over there. All right, now I got it set up in my stitching pony. Pull the threads even. I'm going to go across this one. Come across the other side. Pull them both tight together. Go with the next hole. Now the stitching technique I'm using is a saddle stitch. Tighten up the stitching point a little more. I'll take this needle coming through the back side. This needle under this one. And then the needle that's on the bottom, it's going to go in the top part of the hole. Pull this through a little bit so it does it uh, to check, see if the needle caught it. Throw it over, pull it through. that one through there. There we go. This isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Still not quite as nice as I could make it if I was making it with uh, some of the normal tools I use. This does seem to be you know, fairly natural. I know a lot of people, <clears throat> let me get some water, hang on. A lot of people, you know, they like carving on leather, painting on it doing artwork on it, which is fine. To me, it just uh, takes away from what the animal was. You see something carved, you're really not paying attention or even thinking about what the animal once, once was. You know, you look at the slips or wallets that, you know, have been painted and decorated on you don't really consider that it was once a living animal that had to be killed to make that. I tend to like the, the more natural type of uh, look. But that doesn't mean I don't not like it. I mean, there's quite a few artists out there that have done stuff I think is amazing. I just don't feel like it's 
truly a representation of the animal. Hopefully, um, someone out there tries this. I mean, you don't need fancy tools, as you see. But it sure makes it nice, I'll tell you that much. Do I prefer my fancy tools? Yeah. Shit. A lot of Native American stuff is made this way. Um, it's kind of where you find that artificial sinew and a lot of American made projects. This is a corner one. Turn it sideways, reinstall it back into the stitching pony. I kind of went a little further away. I did go an eighth of an inch for the stitches. Probably could have went a little further with the size thread. But this is the first time doing this, so I didn't make a, a prototype or project. This is unscripted and everything going. So this is the one and only one that I made. Now to set that ribbit, <clears throat> set that copper rivet. I do have a piece of old railroad track that I do use. Which you'll be able to get to see here in a minute. I don't know how this is going to be when I have to backstitch this. crazy this is I think my fifth video I've been having trouble with the audio being too low so I've been playing around with this DJI mic recording this on my cell phone Anybody has any advice on using these mics on a phone, let me know. I've been trying to come up with a reasonable setting for it. I think the next one I'm just going to max out the settings and test it. See what it comes out as.
there's a big difference using this saw and all versus the one I normally use. Yeah. Hopefully after doing this, people may appreciate that knife more. It's not one of GEC's top sellers. But it would be a good EDC knife, especially with the blade, that all blade. Um, you can scratch things, pick things out of areas that you need to get into. Clean your fingernails out. Two more stitches left. There we go. The last one. Now I need to try to back stitch this thing. Gonna go one more stitch and then pull it out. Hmm. All right, let's go finish it up. All right, so here we are back at the workbench. stuff doesn't melt very well so let's see how it does I'm gonna twist it together and see if I get it to melt good So the next step, we're gonna to try to put a copper ribbit right there. And like I said earlier, this was designed to ream out holes. So we're gonna ream out a hole. Need something to back it with.
you want to make the hole close to the size of the rivet Don't push too hard because you wind up going straight through, creating a big old cut. So now I'm going to come to the back side. That way I create the hole evenly. As you can see, that's what it's reaming out right there. As I turn it, the blade sharpen the edge here. Scraping it, creating the hole. Now this is a railroad track I bought off of uh, Etsy, I think. It was machined out flat to put on here and do this with. Now you may want to turn the volume. <clears throat> Shoot, some more drink. You may want to turn your your. <clears throat> You may want to turn your volume down on your TV because this may get a little loud. Now these are rivet setters um, made in the USA. There's each, you get one for each function. And they have grooves on them. This will be the number one, so you use this one first. Number two and number three. Number three is a domer. So if you wanted to dome this over, see how it's like, instead of having an edge there, you can sit here and it'll dome it. So let me get something to cut this with. These are a pair of DeWalt's. Now I like, when I cut mine, I like to go around it. So it cuts it into a point instead of snipping it right off. And what these do, it leaves you just enough distance. to be able to do the next step. Some people tend to flatten these. So that's that. Let me put this away. Get your um, dinosaur toenail here. If you was wondering what this is for, Sometimes when you glue your sections together, you'll 
always go past your stitches. Your glue line will be like from here out to there. So if you look at it like that whole section will have glue on it and then you glue it down. So in order to break this glue line to seal, you can use something like this or anything basically. You push it in there and you scrape it along the edge to break that seal. So let's see if it fits. Behold a slip. Not too bad. This goes to show you, you can do anything with any kind of tools. You don't got to have no fancy tools to be something. So if you got any relatives that were once Neanderthals, hit them up. They probably still got some tools laying around you could use. So if you got any comments about this, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. That way I know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Or I got plenty more things to make and do, so you have fun and go make something.